Imagine you want to become the most powerful person in China. Well, before 1912, your best bet was to be the firstborn son of the Emperor of China. Unless you are in fact royalty, this means most of us wouldn't have had much of a chance. But times have changed. The present-day People's Republic of China was founded by the Chinese Communist Party in 1949. Since that time, there have been six leaders of the country. But what did they have in common and what was their path to the top job? Firstly, they're all men. Chinese men to be more specific, and to be even more specific, they are of the majority Han ethnic group, although Deng Xiaoping belonged to a culturally distinct subgroup. The Chinese population is made up of 48% women and 9% non-Han minorities, but the highest political body from which leaders are chosen has never had a female or minority member. Historically, women and minorities have run China before, however their traditional means of achieving power involved being the mother of a young emperor or the somewhat obsolete military skills of horse riding and archery. Family and education have become more important over time, and while most leaders are from humble backgrounds, Xi Jinping is the first princeling, or child of a communist revolutionary. Since the 1990s, Chinese politics have also become dominated by science and engineering graduates from prestigious universities. The early leaders were all communist revolutionaries who fought in the Chinese Civil War, and unless you have a time machine, the next best thing would be to join the CCP. While you're there, don't forget to say hello to your fellow members all 87,790,000 of them. That's bigger than the population of Germany. In China, the party is king, and rising up these ranks is the only path to political power. It's so big it can be hard to even tell where this power lies. In fact, previous Chinese leaders have held differing official titles while in power. Famously, Deng Xiaoping ran the country with only the title of President of the China Bridge Association. As time has passed, things have become more consistent, with leaders holding three main jobs – General Secretary of the CCP Central Committee, Chairman of the PRC Central Military Commission, and President of the PRC. These represent the three main institutions of power in China – the party, the military, and the state. However, in practice, the party controls all institutions, and becoming General Secretary automatically grants you the other two jobs. Before you start climbing the long CCP corporate ladder, there are two things to keep in mind. 1. Due to its sheer size, the party has rival factions. Aligning with one will help you gain political allies and a shortcut through the party ranks. Currently, there are the princelings, who tend to be elitist and began their careers along the pro-business coasts. Then, there are the Tuan Pai, who typically started out in the Communist Youth League, governed in the interior and are more focused on equality and the poor. 2. As a potential leader, you are always being watched by the secretive organization department of the CCP. They influence the appointments of nearly every position of power within the country, selecting candidates and promoting them based on loyalty, ideology, and performance. The American equivalent would be an organization which appointed all US politicians, the CEOs of major corporations, the heads of media organizations, and university presidents. They are essentially the most terrifying human resources department in the world. Everyone starts in local government, rising through the ranks to become mayors, governors, or party secretaries of prominent regions. Officials are expected to prove themselves outside of their native provinces, to prevent local corruption, and to develop the experience to succeed in Beijing. Make a name for yourself and you should be able to get into the hottest party in town, the National Congress of the CCP. Try to blend in with the dress code, identical dye black hair, red ties, and dark suits. This projects the image of a stable united party, and it's pretty hard to develop a cult of personality without a trademark look. The Congress is held every five years, and theoretically attendees vote on the Central Committee, which in turn votes for the Politburo, the Politburo Standing Committee, and the General Secretary. However, in reality the vote is mostly symbolic, and is limited to pre-approved choices of the Politburo Standing Committee, and powerful retirees. The process of becoming approved for leadership is pretty mysterious, but we do know that power struggles between factions are involved. Once you make it to the Politburo Standing Committee, you will need to keep building allies, including influential military leadership and those powerful retirees. All this will help swing your nomination for the once-a-decade leadership change. Promotion is also based on seniority, so you will need to move up each level before you reach a certain age, otherwise you might be considered too old for leadership. And once you've made it, it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. You are arguably the most powerful person on earth, responsible for governing 1.3 billion people. Seriously, why would anyone want that job? <laughs>